Welcome to an oral history of the church. I'm Jonathan McCormick, and this is the library. Welcome to some of our supplementary material. Um, this is the foyer of the library. We are recording before the library is open because the foyer echoes, so you can try to whisper, and I hear every conversation that you're having, um, which is somewhat unpleasant when people are talking about things I don't want to hear. Um, I think they're being quite on the phone. Uh, <laughs> this is our security gate system. Uh, we use this to keep track of the number of people who come in and out of the building. Uh, this is my desk at the circulation area. I don't try to keep it this dirty um, <laughs> or filled with parts full of periodicals. We're trying to move. Um, trying is the key word. Uh, this is where we assist patrons, students checking in and checking out books, process materials. Uh, we keep books that were uh, going from other campuses or textbooks behind the desk. Uh, over this way is our computer lab. Uh, students can write papers, print, uh, surf the internet, do whatever they need to do to support their studies. This is our book scanner. Uh, a number of years ago, there was a flood uh, in the collapsible shelving. Uh, it destroyed a significant number of limited access items and damaged the mechanism. Uh, some of those books that were destroyed couldn't be replaced, and so part of what we used the, uh, the insurance funding for was getting something to help us uh, fulfill our mission. So we can scan the remaining one and get access books and periodicals, reference materials, things like that. Uh, we use it heavily with uh, DMIN students and online students and PhD students in dissertation. Uh, the library is set up in the Library of Congress system. B to the first half of BS is on this side. Um, B is philosophy, um, BM is Judaica, BR is uh, church history, and BS is biblical studies. Uh, this is what our study space looks like on the floor. Uh, we have a variety of different kinds of study space. We have carrels for individual study, uh, tables for group projects, and couches for working together on group projects or occasionally taking a nap. <laughs> Back in this corner uh, is why I have two parts for periodicals. Uh, this is where we keep our current periodicals. Uh, it's just about to be accepted in newspapers uh, and some Baptist life stuff that we keep over here. This is our view. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to pick it up through the, the video, but across the bay you can see the Brown Baptist Church. Uh, that's the church that Adam and I are uh, members of, and we run uh, to enjoy uh, our church family every day. We're really going to miss them. Our reference collection is over here. Uh, these are the types of items that you would, you would pick up, read a section, put it back, and be done with. So they don't, they don't check out. Uh, a lot of commentaries. Uh, very fine reference collection. I'm pretty proud of uh, the works that we have. Behind the reference desk is uh, the reference section is a copy machine, which students use to copy books. <laughs> or to turn to it when they're in a gym and need to get paper. On this side of the building are rented carrots, um, set up similarly to the uh, rented office that you saw earlier, except uh, on the main floor instead of up in an office. Uh, 
I had one, Adam had one before he moved up to his office. They really are helpful in getting you a place to study and they walk so you can put your materials in your place. Back here in the corner is what was the Cruz Leadership Collection. Uh, Dr. Bill Cruz, the previous president, uh, gave a portion of his library to, uh, to us uh, to help facilitate research and leadership and had a number of artifacts uh, related to his presidency in commemorating his service. Um, those have already been packed and shipped for the most part, although there are some, some flash issues here. We also have newspapers um, from each of the state conventions across the United States. Uh, some of them have been going digital, and so we don't have those anymore. Uh, Dr. Cruz had a painting of him uh, up on this wall, isn't that right? They've, they've come through and packed up all of the wall art already. Yes, uh, Dr. Cruz had a beautiful uh, portrait of himself hanging over the collection. Uh, we've had a number of different uh, paintings that are really quite pretty and uh, of this value uh, hanging throughout the library on canvas, uh, a wood carving, different items in there. They're quite beautiful. We also have a number of uh, Southwestern Native American pottery that have been donated by uh, a donor, and they decorate uh, the facility as well, but they're also being packed up. We have one other special collection on the main floor. Uh, the Morgan Patterson collection. Uh, it's already packed up, so I can't show you that. Those were items of importance of church history. This is our children's collection. Uh, we have uh, a number of different kinds of books. So we have easy readers for children. Uh, we have a, a line of Korean uh, folk tales that are pretty popular. Uh, we have some uh, comic books of the Bible, and other picture, Bible picture books. Uh, the comic books are actually rather popular. Um, and then other early childhood books uh, relating to the Bible, church history, doctrine. So we have a book on the Trinity, we have a book on medieval book binding, <laughs> uh, we have uh, a book of the life of John Bunyan, and we have other books that are you know, just general fiction. So. <coughs> And sugar fruit and honey. <laughs> you have gang literature here? So our children's collection is pretty popular. Um, we have a fair number of students who have come through and read this to their kids. Uh, part of our goal as a library is to encourage lifelong learning, and that means lifelong. So we want our students to read to their kids yeah. and to have what they need to uh, to participate in the educational leadership classes, um, particularly the classes where they're working with children. If we can, let's take one chance at a, a wider shot of the view here. So looking out over this part of Richardson Bay, we're seeing on the other side of that water the city of Tiburon. It's currently low tide. I don't know if you can tell the mud there sticking out of the bay. But it's currently currently low tide, and in the distance, if you're zooming in real close, you can see three white crosses, and that's Tiburon Baptist Church referred to earlier. So there's lots of um, beautiful scenery here, rolling hills, uh, lots of trees, uh, sparse you know, scattering of the homes, relatively speaking. 
uh, this is what people can come and see through these windows and uh, that's just one taste. We have a downstairs section of the library. Shall we, we take the elevator? Elevator and stairs. We have a uh, gemstone map of the globe that we donated. That's also going down to Southern California. We used to have in the, the elevator uh, a sign encouraging people to read. Uh, that sign is going to Fremont. Donated by previous circulation supervisor Sean Cowan. Sean, if you're watching, thank you. <laughs> uh, we have a display case with some more of those artifacts of Southwestern um, Native Americans. Uh, and we have new arrivals. <laughs> Through a thick patch of trees. When students are wanting a conference room that has more privacy, they tend to use this one. Our other two conference rooms are medium and small conference room. Uh, this one will support uh, 12 to 15 people. Again, depending on how you are, it can be and stuff like that. Uh, we have a whiteboard for students to use, and they can look out and see the bed. These are more sound resilient than some of the other er areas up on campus. So if students are wanting to do a group project um, or trying to uh, practice their Greek and Hebrew and don't want anyone to hear how terribly they're butchering the language, <laughs> this is a good place to go. I don't know, I studied French in here with um, uh, Tim Howe, a uh, PhD candidate, uh, who spent some time overseas in French-speaking countries. The small conference room supports about eight people uh, and has a similar layout to the, uh, to the medium conference room. Uh, that easel is not no longer there. That's left over from a uh, library staff meeting in town. To finish off the library collection, BS to BV is upstairs. BS, again, is Bible study. BT is theology. BV is practical theology. Uh, Adam and I live in the BV 600s because that's uh, doctor of the church. Uh, this first set of things is periodical literature. So we have a very fine um, collection of back periodicals on a number of topics related to, to history and theology and church administration or teaching. Um, and we, we have this available to facilitate student studies. They can't be checked out, but we make copies of them and send them around the world. Uh, I just emailed something to a student in Southeast Asia. Uh, BX is the um, is denominational literature. We don't have the keys in, but there's a switch that turns on and off the the movable shelves, and a key that turns on the power. When it's on, if you press the button, it moves back and forth, and there's a uh, a sensor in the floor that reads your weight, and if there's someone standing on the uh, 
standing in the aisle or a book on the floor, it won't close. Um, DS is history. Um, EA continues into uh, social sciences and uh, race. Um, to, to move these new ones, we had to replace the, the mechanism in, um, in the, some After of that the flood. Because of flood. Yeah. Um, you have to reset at the aisle, and there's a laser that does the same job as the, um, the sensor. So when your foot breaks the laser, it stops. Then once you've done that, you can move to any of them and move over. Obviously, the bees are the greatest portion of our collection because those relate to, um, to theology and philosophy and religion. Um, over here is the thieves, so Greek language and literature and uh, Hebrew language and literature are the biggest portions of that. Uh, this is where the magic happens for translation and study. Uh, we even have some works by some of our faculty members down here. Dr. Wagner's got a book on uh, preaching using Old Testament Hebrew. Uh, as I said, the, there's the limited access section. These are items that are old and still somewhat useful for research, particularly for our academic graduate program. Um, but they're in condition that might not turn out well if we have them regularly circulating. Um, some of these Bibles are gifts from missionaries uh, who've gone around the world and they came back and said, this is the translation of the people that we worked with and we would like this to be accessible to future students. Some of the other items are also items that would would be a little bit controversial of circulating, but uh, for example, the Broadman Bible Commentary, first edition, if you know about that and you know what that means. If not, we'll cover that someday. <laughs> Down at the end of the limited access is a place Adam and I hope someday we too will join. Uh, we keep a copy of all of the completed uh, PhD dissertations, PHM theses, and DNN projects uh, that were completed um, at this seminary. We have a circulating copy that's at whatever campus the student uh, completed the degree at. Uh, we offer the DMAN at all five campuses. Uh, but we also keep a copy here at the main campus uh, as a sort of archive of the item. So, uh, for those of you interested in Neo-Assyrian administration. Dr. Arbino's uh, dissertation is here and on display. Uh, we also have other people of interest. Um, Dr. Blackaby, in for example. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. Dr. Henry Blackaby. Um, and I'm not seeing, but I know it's here, uh, oh. uh, Dr. Vaughn Prescott, uh, for those who saw our interview with Dr. Prescott, his, right. um, his project is here, um, in the collection, as is our, uh, the dissertation by my dissertation advisor, Dr. Rick Dirks. Ah. There we go.
So a wide variety of uh, areas studied and mm -hmm. worked on. We've got a THM project that's uh, a biography of our founding president. So this is an important portion of our collection uh, for managing the history of our institution. There are th also are some more periodicals that are um, older and rare over at the end of the of the access section. Down here in the back corner, we have um, a microfilm machine that uh, has to be from uh, the 1950s. <laughs> uh, this is heavier than it looks, and it looks pretty heavy. Um, in here are microfilm, which is a, a roll of film with uh, pictures of, for us, mostly newspapers and periodicals. Looks like that and goes here, feeds on to the other side. Uh, most of what we have are state papers of the um, of the Baptist conventions. Um, so these are the Kentucky Recorder uh, from uh, the 1800s. And we have another set over here. We also have a microfiche reader and microfiche, which I'm not seeing which that was, but that's a card that works the same way. Uh, we are currently using this area to store boxes from materials that we uh, DSS from the periodical collection. And with that, that is the end of our tour. Uh, this is the Golden Gate Baptist Theological Seminary Library. We hope you've enjoyed it.